Hi crafty friends, it's Shana from Shanuki Arts. I don't know about you, but I really love decorating and sometimes over decorating the center folds of my junk journals. I'm not sure if there's a formal term for a center fold of a junk journal, but it is the middle section of a signature, usually where the signature is tied together. I'm even happy to leave an entire journal undecorated and with plain pages and just decorate the center. I think it's a lovely surprise as you paging through a journal when you get to the middle of it you have a feast for the eyes. In today's video I'm going to share with you 10 ways that I decorate my centerfolds. Of course there is no right or wrong way of doing this and I'm not saying that mine is the only way. This is just the way I enjoy doing it and I wanted to share with you a few different ideas to hopefully inspire you for your projects. The first one is the easiest and simplest of the 10. I like to use ready-made cards with quotes or sentiments that are color coordinating in my project and sew them in the middle with the sentiment facing the top so when you open it you have something beautiful to read. The next one is my absolute favorite. I call it the jam-packed centerfold. This is one that I did with the Christmas theme a couple of years ago. I have done this jam-packed centerfold in a couple of my journals when I first started journaling. I always loved using as many cards, tags and ephemera as I could find. Usually made as a double pocket across both pages, let me show you how you can do this. I'm going to be working in my extra large journal today that has quite a few signatures so I have a few centerfolds to work with. For the double pocket, you'll need a piece of cardstock. I'm using a double-sided piece of scrapbook paper, but you could also use just a piece of cardstock and a piece of vellum for the front pocket. I first need to trim it to size to fit across both of the pages of the centerfold. I've made a mark with a pencil and I'm just going to use a metal ruler to tear off the excess. If you want a neater cut off, of course you could use a cutter. I'm then going to fold up about four centimeters of the paper. If you don't have the double-sided paper, you can just cut a strip about four centimeters high across the length and then add that to another piece of cardstock in the back. I'm now going to cut the pocket to size, leaving an additional two and a half to three centimeters above the original fold. I'm then going to fold it in half, and as I open it up, I've realized I haven't cut that quite straight, so I'm just going to use my cutter to even that off. That's what happens when you're lazy like me and just use a ruler to tear everything. So just to recap, if you don't have the double-sided paper, just cut two strips of different papers, one obviously shorter than the other, and place the shorter one in the front, which will be your smaller front pocket. And then it'll look something like this. I'm going to now use my sewing machine to stitch this together. If you don't have a sewing machine, of course you can just use glue or double-sided tape. So I've stitched down the left side, down the bottom, down the middle and then down the right hand side. So this creates the pocket on the left and the pocket on the right. We're now going to stick this across both pages. I'm just going to use craft glue. I find when I use double sided tape, it doesn't stick quite well, especially where the stitching is. I find that a liquid glue works much better. So I'm going to apply a thin layer along the bottom, both sides and the middle fold. And then I'm going to place this across my two pages, making sure the center of this pocket is in line with the center of the book. Another good thing about using a liquid glue, you do have time to shuffle this around to get it in the perfect position before the glue dries. I'm then going to add some clips and some paper clips just to hold everything together while it dries. That is one downside of using a liquid glue that takes a couple of minutes to dry. I also like to add additional decoration to my pockets. So I'm finding some color coordinating pieces, some wording, some leaves and a flower, and I'm just going to work on the placement of these in the corner. And then once I'm happy with the positioning, I'm going to glue this down. I'm also using a liquid glue for this. This will again allow me to move elements around to get the perfect placement before everything dries. 
To add a bit of dimension and texture, I'm going to add a small piece of cheesecloth underneath the main element. You don't need to add any additional glue to the cheesecloth. Because it is so holy and the glue seeps through, the glue that you're applying to the element is enough to stick everything down. This is a great way to incorporate your theme from your journal if you have one in the decorations of the pockets and to bring all the colors together in a central location. I'm going to put this to the side to dry well before I add the tags and the ephemera and all the goodies. For this next one I'm going to make a center pocket. Using the middle two pages and for mine the pages are quite smaller than the rest of my journal I'm going to mark a center point and then I'm going to use my round punch to punch a half circle on the right hand side. This is just to allow me to get the tags in and out easily. I'm then going to apply glue at the top and the bottom and then fold over the other page and stick that together. So the side will still be open where all my bits will go inside but the little pocket flaps from left to right and you can't see the center strings. I've applied paper clips to this too to help press everything together to glue it and while that's drying I'm going to do some stenciling on the left hand side with a stencil and some ink and a blending brush. This is just to add a little bit of interest to the center page. I want to lighten everything up just a little bit so I'm going to use some watered down acrylic paint in white and using my fan paint brush I'm going to apply some white splatter. I love the softness it adds to the page. Once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to add a few pieces into the pockets. The book page I used earlier to protect the background when I did the white splatter, I'm going to fold that in half and pop it into the pocket. I'm going to color coordinate everything, so I'm going to add a green paint sample card too and then also a ready-made journal card in a light green. I like that they are sticking out so that you can see that it is a pocket. You can add as much or as little as you want inside. And then for some extra detail, I've got a little mini postcard ephemera that I'm going to attach with a small paper clip to the top of the center pocket. This pocket is now dry. Let's fill it up. This is really the fun part. I went through my stash and found all the color coordinating bits and bobs that I could find that I can add here. I'm using sort of whatever I have. There's ready-made journal cards, pages I've torn from a used journal, some tickets, some ephemera, some sentiments, a little mini envelope, some cards and tags. It's called jam-packed for a reason. Put in as much as you like. I'm also adding a few black and white elements for contrast. And then a small mini playing card in black and white again. I'm going to attach to the front of the left pocket with a paper clip. I love how cute that looks. I'm feeling that the background is a little bit too white and too plain. So I'm going to add something. I've made some paper ruffles out of some dress pattern tissue paper. I'm going to put a small one in the bottom left and balance it out by adding one to the top right, which will help and block out that major white that we have and adds additional interest. Now, depending what papers you have in the center part of your journal depends how you're going to do this. Mine is plain white when I open the center fold, but the colored papers are on either side. So I'm going to fold this back, each one halfway, meeting in the middle. If your page is white on the back and the front, that's fine too. You can do the same process and you can just decorate it when you're done. I call these fold in pockets. Using some glue stick, I'm applying it to the base and then pressing over the fold so it sticks together. I'm then going to apply my liquid glue 
to the top and the bottom on each side and press this down to the backing page. This will create a pocket on the right and a pocket on the left. As I'm applying paper clips to hold everything down while the glue dries, I notice that the fold over pages that I have just created are slightly larger than the background paper I've stuck them to. And for me, that doesn't look right, so I need to fix it quickly. An easy fix is just to trim it. So easy enough, I'm just going to take a scissors and trim down the excess. I will need to do that on both sides. Some of the glue that I applied before has gone onto an additional page, which I'm just going to use a baby wipe just to wipe off. Thankfully, it was still a little bit wet. I want to add some additional decoration to these. I have this floral washi tape. This is available from the washi tape shop that it's actually more like a sticker so i'm going to cut out the flowers that i think really suit the theme or the color theme that i'm using on this page i'm just going to cut this out now this type of washi tape has got a very shiny finish which i don't really like once i stick it down on my project so to fix that i'm going to add a very very thin layer of white gesso over the top of the sticker You don't want the gesso here too thick because then it'll cover up all the detail and beautiful colors of the sticker. It's a very, very, very thin layer just to get rid of that sheen. I will need more than one of these floral bunches just to create some balance. You will need to leave this gesso to dry naturally. If you use any kind of a heating tool, because it's a sticker, it'll either bubble or melt or lose its stickiness. But thankfully, gesso dries very quickly. Applying my stickers now, one at the bottom to the right, sort of in the middle of the page, and then one at the top left. I thought it may need a little bit more green or some more elements, so I have these rub-on stickers. I'm just choosing all the ones that have got sort of small leaves that I could incorporate into the floral designs. These rub-on stickers are available from Topology. I will put all the links in the description box below. And then I thought these two butterflies will look really good too and the turquoise matches really, really well. So let's see where we're going to put these. I move them around the page just to see where I'm going to use them. I don't end up using all of them. I've just decided to use a few. When I'm ready to add them, I remove the backing paper and then place the rub on sticker in the place where I want it to be and then use my little popsicle stick to rub quite firmly over the design and then peel off the top layer. And of course, I'm loving the little butterflies, so they're going to have a place on the centerfold. I'm also going to add a bit more turquoise, just to make everything link together. 
I'm going to use this really beautiful metallic turquoise acrylic paint that I'm going to water down quite a bit and then I'm going to splatter onto the bottom left section of this page. I just need to cover the areas that I don't want to have any paint splatter on it. I'm using some old book pages for this, just covering those areas. And then I'm adding just a small amount of splatter just to incorporate more of the turquoise color. And then this splatter page I'm going to use later in another project. Drying that really well and then look at the beautiful metallic finish. To fill the pockets, I have some old journal pages that I'm going to fold in half. I'm leaving the spiral bits on where it's been torn out of the book. I really like that. The pages have got some color coordinating bits. I fold those in half and place them in each pocket. And then I'm also adding a vintage postcard. Now, don't worry that when you put in your pocket elements, the background that you designed behind this is not seen. That's okay. When you do remove the postcard to journal on it or the piece of journal paper or whatever you move out of there, you will then see the beautiful background. It's never lost. I have this beautiful butterfly from an old calendar that I've been dying to use in a project. We are going to stick this down in the middle of the signature as a giant element. It doesn't of course have to be a butterfly, it can be any kind of picture that you have found maybe in a magazine, it could be a drawing that you have done, or another picture that suits the theme of your journal. It just needs to be really big and take up most of the page. Again, the background paper of this is just white, it's lined paper, and I think it needs a little bit more of a something so the butterfly isn't just there all on its lonesome. So using a grey lid pencil and my best cursive handwriting, I am going to write down a little butterfly story. Just a random story, nothing too complicated. I'm going to handwrite that so that'll be the background of the butterfly. Of course you could use this part for personal journaling. You could write a poem, a story, a letter to someone, anything really goes. And I think handwritten adds a beautiful touch. Don't worry if you think your handwriting is not beautiful or pretty or neat or legible. It's your journal and it is your unique touch. So go on and start scribbling. I'm then going to use my glue stick to attach my beautiful butterfly to this centerfold. And I really love the way that looks with the cursive handwriting in the background. Now the paper that the butterfly is printed on is quite thick and it has a little bit of a gloss to it as it was a calendar. So I found that when I stuck this down and folded it in half, the little body of the butterfly was bending a little bit awkwardly and wasn't folding really well in the bottom section. I decided to use the liquid craft glue for this section instead and I also trimmed the center strings a little bit shorter. And then once the liquid glue was dry, the fold worked really well. I'm going to add some feelers to my butterfly just using a black fine liner pen. Some elements need to be added to your centerfold before you stitch your journal. I have made a really, really quick journal compromising of four pages and a cardstock cover just to demonstrate this. So I have a handmade envelope. I have an envelope maker, but you don't need one. You could also use a ready-made envelope that you've opened up or you could cut out a new envelope. And you need to attach this and sew it in before you stick everything together. Using the bottom section of the envelope, not the top part where it is going to fold over, we're going to line that up with the center of our page. We're then going to use some paper clips or any kind of bulldog clips to keep everything together and the envelope in place. We're then going to make our holes for our stitching. I'm going to use three holes as I always use pamphlet stitch. So using my little template and my awl, I'm going to punch that through. 
the envelope, my pages and the cover. And then using my embroidery thread and my embroidery needle, I'm going to stitch my signature together while the envelope is in place. Once you tie that off and trim, we're going to stick our envelope together. I'm going to use some double-sided tape and just apply two pieces on the inner folds and then press down the bottom flap. This will close the envelope, it'll hide the stitching and then our envelope is in our center fold. To help the envelope flap keep closed, I'm just going to add a small quick little closure. I'm going to punch a circle from a piece of cardstock using my round punch and I'm going to glue this to the bottom section just under the point of the closing flap. I'm going to apply glue just at the bottom part of the circle. We don't want the top part to stick anything down and then once it's dry this will allow you to pop the point of the envelope in and out to open and close the envelope. I seem to have made this entire journal with plain white centerfold in each signature. I did make this journal quite a few years ago in hope of actually journaling my life, but I didn't get very far in that part. Maybe one day. The other side of the white paper has got the beautiful blue, which we will be able to use. I'm cutting this smaller, as the idea for this one is to fold down the paper to create a corner or sideways pocket. So effectively, we're going to have two triangles and we want them sort of square. So the paper needs to be a certain size if possible. So I'm just going to glue this all down. I've also flapped the bottom up and glued that. So there's no excess underneath my little corner pocket. To enhance the center, I'm adding a piece of printed washi tape down the center. And then to glue this down, we're going to apply some adhesive just in the bottom section and then we're going to press them down onto the next page behind this. I'm then trimming off the excess from the page I've just stuck the pockets onto just to neaten that off. And also so the pockets don't look like they're just floating. I'm not crazy about this blue to be honest, so I'm going to tone it down a bit. I'm just putting some protective papers around all the area so I don't get any paint or texture paste onto that. I'm going to then use a stencil and apply some texture paste over some of the blue area. I want it quite uneven so I'm going to put my texture paste just here and there leaving some areas without. I am loving that and it looks so much better. Once that's nice and dry, I'm going to add my elements. I've got some ready-made large journal cards, some smaller ones. Again, whatever you have in your stash. These ones I'm adding that are quite bright, I've gone for more of a brighter look because of the blue. Also, it was meant to be a personal journal, so it was very mismatched and colorful with no theme. As I look at this, I'm feeling the background again is a bit too white behind all my little tags and journal cards. So I'm going to add something. I was a little bit worried here that I may spoil it, but you honestly don't know until you try. The idea was to use an opposite effect. So using the same stencil as I did for the texture paste, I'm now using a blue ink with my blending brush and applying it to the top section, but not all the way down, blending it lighter as it goes down. I think it looks okay. I'm not loving it and I'm not hating it. Let's see how it looks when I add the cards. I do think that looks better and it sort of helps to ground everything and makes it not look empty in the background. Thankfully, I had a large journal with a lot of centerfolds to make this video. 
Another option is to add a beautiful napkin to the center fold. Just that. If you have a napkin with a beautiful design, you could add it with nothing additional needed. All you'll need to do is separate your napkin. Normally it is two, sometimes three ply. You just need to lift that top layer off. You only need the part with the design. Although this one, the backing tissue paper has some beautiful marks left, which I'm going to use for collage in another project. As the page I'm sticking it to is quite thin, I think it is just a 70 GSM, I'm going to apply glue stick to adhere the napkin to the paper. If it's something thicker, you could use a Mod Podge or a gel medium, whatever you prefer. I just thought if I use Mod Podge on this paper, it'll get super soggy. Pressing down the napkin as well as possible to avoid as many air bubbles as I can. I press that down firmly and now I'm going to apply a thin layer of Mod Podge over the top of the napkin. This is just to secure it, waterproof it and to make it a little bit stronger. Otherwise over time it can tear or wear away. And once all of that is dry, we're going to trim off the excess. The easiest way is to turn it over and cut along the page line. And while I was doing that, I decided for the vertical pieces, I'm just going to fold this over and glue it onto the page and trim just the top and bottom. If you do find that if you use Mod Podge, the pages in the center do tend to stick together a little bit when the book is closed, you can just sprinkle a little bit of talcum powder to avoid that. This is another super simple one and a great way to use up those pretty napkins. I found another journal that I made a long time ago, but it has a really pretty center fold. So we're going to use it. The threads in the center are quite long, so we're going to add beads to this. The beads are going to stick out the bottom of the journal. We're going to add quite a few and even maybe a charm. Make it quite chunky. And this will add lots of interest to the center fold. A little tip to avoid all the beads falling into the center of the journal if you want them to stay sort of hanging out the bottom. What I did is when I applied the first bead, I placed it in the section I wanted, just underneath the pages where they end, and then I threaded the needle back through the bead, so it's like a double loop, which will hold that bead in place and they won't all slip up and down. I did that same double looping for the last bead and then tied the thread into a knot to prevent anything falling off. I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'm going to make the other one slightly longer. I'm not going to put an acrylic butterfly. Instead, I'm going to put a little metal heart charm, but also lots of beads, chunky with the colors of the theme.
This one also pretty simple, but super effective. Look how cute they look sticking out the bottom. I have one centerfold left, unless I make another whole journal. So I'm going to do the last two ideas on one centerfold. We're going to make another double pocket. This time it's going to be vertical using the pages already in the journal. We want them at different levels. So the first one fold over just a smaller section. Mine is about three centimeters. And then apply glue and stick that down. The next one we're going to fold over as well. This time we're going to make the fold bigger. I'm folding it to the center and also gluing that down. Before I stick my pockets down, I want to create a little bit of decoration. So using my inks, my blending brushes and a stencil, I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling. You could also stick washi tape, pretty pictures, die cuts. You could paint it, splatter or leave it plain. I'm then going to apply glue to the top and bottom of each pocket to stick them onto each other and then onto the back page. While that's drying, I'm going to work on the last idea. I'm going to continue with the theme from the left page just so everything is cohesive. And for this page, we're going to do a layered embellishment stack. Stenciling in the background to add the mood and the color. Then I'm going to put a piece of cheesecloth for texture and interest. Before I stick anything down, I'm going to add some white splatter with the watered down white acrylic paint. This is just to add a little bit of texture to lighten everything up. A little difficult to see in the video, but it's there. I'm then going to go through my stash and find all the elements I'm going to use for my layering. Here again, another great way to use up scraps or other little bits and bobs that you possibly won't use in another project. So I'm just working through the different elements and trying to stack them so that they look balanced and are pleasing to the eye. I also want to add one of these beautiful butterflies as a focal point. These butterflies are available from Making and Creating, previously known as the D Digital Collage Club, and I'll put a link to that website in the description box below. I'm going to add a little bit of thread just underneath my butterfly. I'm using a brown color to match the theme. I just cut a piece and just crumple it up in my fingers and place it underneath the butterfly. This adds texture and dimension and a bit of interest. Once I'm happy with all my bits and where they're going to go, I'm going to start gluing everything down. For the thinner papers, I use a glue stick. For the thicker ones, I will use a hot glue or a clear craft glue.
this is a great way to bring elements of your journal together if you're using a theme you can incorporate all the colors of your journal into the center area which will make everything cohesive And yes, I'm going to add a little bit of splatter here too, just a teensy weensy bit of white splatter over the butterfly, just to give it a little bit of contrast. As I'm filling my pockets on the left, I forget that my butterfly paint is still wet, so I press everything down with the palm of my hand, a habit I have for sticking things down, and of course the white paint has smudged, that's okay. I've used a baby wipe just to wipe that off, and then I'll just reapply a little bit of the splatter. No problem at all. Of course, you could decorate the pockets on the left. I'm keeping mine a little bit plain because I have the embellishment on the right because my pages are combined, but you can add as much or as little as you want. I'm going to take these three little tickets and attach them to the edge of the pocket with a paper clip. I really hope you enjoyed this video and were inspired to create some magic for your journal centerfolds. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and also hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. Happy creating and I'll see you again soon. Bye.